I think uh, season one definitely uh, taught me a lot of things, uh, changed me, uh, changed me as a person, as a captain. Uh, a lot of, lot of changes happened internally. Yeah, I think the auction was uh, pretty exciting. Uh, we didn't know where we were gonna go, and then uh, I was selected by RCB. Uh, which is, I was really happy about uh, because of course franchisee-wise, uh, RCB has always been a really great franchise. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, the way we started, things didn't work out. Uh, a lot of things didn't go our favor in terms of, like we played three matches in five days and then we lost three and then it was like really hard to come back. We didn't have time to prepare. Uh, it started and ended in a jiffy. The team came maybe a couple of days. The team didn't know each other. The players didn't know each other. Only thing what we had in our mind end of WPL or towards the end of WPL was what is the state of mind of all our players and support staff. Uh, Rajesh, Prathamesh and all of them wanted to have a video call with me. And I didn't know them a lot till then. I'd just seen them on auction table a lot and just here and there. Uh, so I went to the call like, I don't know, like, you know, what's going to happen. And the first question they ask is, are you okay? Like, you know, leave whatever's happening. Are you doing fine mentally? Which actually made me uh, feel much better because um, that's, that's, I think, what a player needs because no one really goes out there and wants to not perform or lose a match for the team. I, Rajesh and Smriti, after year one, met in Bombay. And there, uh, we did spend some time and I think so, out of that maybe 3-4 hours of discussion, maybe we spent 15-20 minutes to understand what uh, went wrong. Walk, worked in season 1, but we didn't spend too much of time on doing post-mortem. But then when, when we started planning ahead, uh, looking ahead, saying that what needs to be done. We were focused forward. We wanted to have a very, very clear view that how should we be, you know, should we be approaching this whole season two uh, from a team culture, team resourcing, and uh, how the team really needs to shape up, come together as one unit. And there, I have to give full marks to Smriti. I think that particular meeting uh, started a lot of uh, things for the season. Uh, we uh, chalked down few things about how what changes we want. Um, and uh, you know how we wanted to play a brand of cricket, what culture we wanted to set. And we just started chalking down few things about uh, team combinations and uh, support staff because I feel support staff is an extremely important cog in the wheel sometimes. The best thing which I got out of that uh, meeting was that you know they said that this is your team, build the build the way you want to for the next two years. We won't, whatever you need, we'll be just giving you from our side. She wanted to take the ownership and responsibility that comes along with that. And I thought that at that moment, that belief in her had been instilled. That, that belief that yes, I can do it and I want to do it. And we all wanted to support that belief. We just wanted to be the wind beneath the wings and she could lead it and she did that. Uh, and, and, and when we sat back and, and looked at stuff, the first stuff was how we'll relook at the support staff. And when it comes to support staff, the coach being the head of the support staff, we want to look at the head coach and hence uh, Luke's name came in. Uh, and, one of the, and we discussed, we discussed in terms of what are the kind of attributes we require in a coach. And the first one was, uh, as, as, as he done brilliantly well uh, in women's uh, tournaments and, and that ticked, uh, ticked the boss, box. Uh, and what kind of human being is, uh, is Luke and when we checked with other players, uh, we all felt saying that he is he's a brilliant human being first and we felt that is required to build a culture which is required to take this team to the next level. And then I just picked up the call, the phone and spoke to Luke uh, and that happened and I, I, I was uh, travelling to London. I met Luke along with uh, Smriti and we were, we just teed off there and we signed off everything there and that's the journey we started on that day, from that day till now you know what happened. Uh, my first contact was from Rajesh Manon um, in probably um, the middle half of, of last year and as conversations continued um, I guess the excitement um, built um, as I started to 
understand even more about the the, um, the franchise and and what we're looking to achieve and and felt really um, invested in in the process that we're about to go through. I think the chemistry between uh, the coach uh, Luke and Smriti was pre-established. They knew each other. They knew. Uh, their operating styles, they knew their strengths and areas of opportunities and that's where I think uh, she was very confident. I remember having a having few meetings uh, during 100 with Luke because of course I had worked in 100 with him uh, from last two years and I saw him uh, work the way he did for the Adelaide Strikers as well. So, um, so yeah, I think uh, the meetings were all about just focus on you know the players' cricketing part and building a culture, not only for this year but like you know when when once you set the culture right for the first two or three seasons, it's like uh, maybe you know for the next eight ten years the culture is set for that particular franchise. I'm not talking about winning or losing the way the brand of cricket we want to play. If that is set, it kind of goes on auto mode uh, later on. So that was the first conversation that how do we want, what sort of people we want, what sort of players we want in our team. Uh, the only brief to Luke was to create a team which, which, which we are not looking for just one year but maybe for three, four, five, six years and a culture which, is, which goes beyond that. We had lots of discussions around some learnings from, from last season and around um, what we wanted to build around a, a team culture and um, a spirit and a, a, I guess that sense of belonging towards RCB for a, for a playing group. Um, we know we've got an amazing fan base and, and we re really wanted to, to make them proud um, through the way we played the game and the way we interacted. And um, so there was lots of, of thought and, and, and effort put into how we go about achieving those tasks. My message not only to Smithy and Luke but the whole team was very very short and brief. I said that look here we can get the best performance in a happy environment. Let's create a happy environment. We just support each other, be there for each other, be it highs or lows but we all need to stay happy, positive throughout the tournament. We all knew saying that the best way to win a tournament is not to talk about winning. Uh, and we started by uh, say, setting, saying that we all know we are here to win. And, and, and then we understood and got into the mind saying that we have the resources to do that. But let's not talk about that, harp on that every single day. Let it be there. Uh, but what we did was we wanted to talk about the how and why. Uh, how can we achieve that? What are the environment required? What are the inclusive inclusiveness we can bring into the team? What are the off-field behavior what is required? Uh, what are the relationship which we can build in the team and the bonding in the team? So we concentrated more on that and every manifestation of that you can see. How can we make these three weeks the best time of our life? That was our entire motto. And if you are to do that, then we need to create the right environment to do that. And hence an HQ, the team, the team room, is critical to that. We built a 5,000 square foot gym. It, uh, and, and we had a, we had a coffee, coffee shop. Uh, we had the TT table, TT competition. We had uh, Pictionary there. We have multiple things happen there in that environment, which brought the team together. So I, I feel that RCB HQ as a concept was very critical. The other aspect what we did was we renamed it from a team to a tribe. Team is who comes together for, from an, uh, to achieve a common goal. A tribe is a, a bunch of people coming together to achieve a common purpose. That is critical. The purpose and they bleed together to achieve that purpose. They are not individual to achieve the goal. That is the, 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 the mind shift which we created. And, and you can see how the team was pouncing on the field and winning that every moment and working as a tribe there. When, and, and there was no discrimination and every, every match, irrespective of we win or not win, uh, we were there uh, at the end of the game, sitting together. Uh, we are not chatting cricket, but just enjoying ourselves uh, together, together. It was all about winning and learning. None of the uh, team members spoke about losing any game. Always it was a learning culture. We win or we learn. With that responsibility and control comes a lot of uh, other things as well in terms of pressure of delivering what we have asked. Like we have asked, we are getting a lot of things and then 
with that also comes that you have to actually deliver the performance also so uh, so definitely there's a lot of pressure in that terms but uh, as i said i would rather take that or or just just be part of it and just be okay about what's happening so you know that's a call i think but i would rather prefer doing that and win or lose at least i know that you know my intentions were right uh, but the biggest i think the shift was i just feel that we wanted really positive people everywhere we just like that was the biggest shift that you know uh, win lose whatever happens It's because rcb uh, as a franchise uh, of course because of the fans all the appreciation criticism is a lot more than any other franchise so the the biggest shift for us in terms of that that was the first talk which i had with players that what is important is what how we feel about us as a cricketer or what we did on the match matters whatever is the outside noise it doesn't matter so that was the biggest shift that we actually become like a deaf ear to outside world for those 25 days focus on each other back each other up we had few tough losses but i think it was really important to back each other up so that was the biggest cultural shift the ability to work with different people different franchise um the scale of of indian cricket and, and rcb cricket is is obviously um a huge factor but if you pull back and see when we looked at the season and when we spoke to smriti luke and the senior players there were a couple of challenges which we had and these challenges came from even from last year number one uh unlike a national team where uh, patriotism leads uh, this is not a national team there's a franchise team point number 1 point number 2 franchise cricket is transient because today you are there tomorrow you're not there so 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 what are you playing for the third aspect there is fear of failure uh last year we failed miserably four uh, we came fourth and what happened this year the fifth is the the players come in late especially the foreign players come in late couple of days uh, before the ipl so people don't know each other so there are multiple factors which resulted in same thing thing throwing up a lot of challenges so we just pull back and, and sourcing what is that binding uh uh what is that philosophy which we can wrap around our flag and we were very clear because we didn't have to look left or right and and we we needed something where our our cricketers believe in and we pull back and and see it was our fans and our fans are the best they supported the team in their highs and lows i still remember there was a game where we wanted 23 runs of the last ball and our fans were doing rcb 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 it is not for anyone else we are not playing for we are not playing for anybody we are just playing for our fans which we call as 12th man the reason is they have supported us across the globe wherever we play we win we lose or we do whatever it is we are with they are with us and 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 and, and this this fans cut across uh, demography geography uh, psychography uh, they are uh, they are school kids housewife auto drivers uh, cab drivers and also c suit level uh, ceo who is who, who is running a business we are across but only point which unites them and they may have a lot of trials and tribulations going through their daily lives but when they come and support this uh, team called rcb and when they come to the stadium and, and cheer for rcb they forget all this stuff they stand there tall supporting and they forget all this and we want to play for them and that galvanized how did that galvanize the first game in chinnaswami when smriti went in for the toss when the the fans started ch- started chanting smriti smriti and rcb rcb and where she was not able to talk that was the aha moment i've had few moments of course in international cricket a lot of times and even uh, first match at chinna swami i was expecting a lot of things of course it's going to be a sell- sold out uh, stadium it's going to be loud so all the other things were expected like when you go to bat there will be a huge show cheer and people will be chanting names and all of those i was expecting but maybe the toss thing when you are expecting something and it happens you do not like react you just be like okay yeah, you knew it's happening but the toss thing was something which i didn't expect that you know i'll go to toss and people will cheer so that maybe you know the first time when it happened i just was like okay <laughs> i was just i took a moment to just see what's happening because i didn't expect that uh, but to be fair like at that time i didn't really think smriti mandana or rcb or any other any other part of it it just felt really nice as a women cricketer uh, to feel that sort of a feeling 
बिकॉज यू नो वी सीन बोथ साइड ऑफ द कॉइन्स इन लास्ट लाइक फाइव ईयर्स थिंग्स इफ चेंज मैसेवली फॉर अस प्लेइंग इन एम टी स्टेडियम्स टू नाउ गेटिंग दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ अ चेयर फॉर अ टॉस फॉर एनी वुमेन क्रिकेटर फॉर दैट आई फेल आई जस्ट फेल दैट दैट टाइम वाओ इट्स लाइक वुमेन्स क्रिकेट इज विनिंग लाइक दिस इज वॉट यू नो वी प्लेड क्रिकेट फॉर ऑनेस्टली स्पीकिंग आई वॉज इंट सरप्राइज आई ऑलवेज न्यू वेन वी वर इन्फॉर्म बाई बी सी सी आई दैट द वेन्यू इज गोइंग टू बी बैंगलोर आई मीन वी वॉज वेरी हैप्पी नॉट जस्ट फ्रॉम अ फ्रेंचाइज परस्पेक्टिव बट फ्रॉम अ फैंस परस्पेक्टिव एज वेल एंड आर फैंस डिड कम आउट and they have supported the game of cricket agnostic of gender and the the brand rcb this has really been a big differentiator as compared to any other cricketing franchise or the sporting franchise extending their love and support regardless of who is on the field I just felt uh, there was a lot of uh, like a, there was sense of calmness around all the days like when we won when we lost there was I feel uh, of course you know the energy is definitely dip that you can't that like you know it's not it's impossible that you lose and you still be like ha ha you know it's, it's hard I know and that is why we have to accept that they have to be in their own space to understand feel it what's happening uh, but but yeah I just feel like you know. at no point anyone was like we are a bad team or what what is happening to us no one questioned doubted our ability we we thought that okay on that particular day we could not live up to uh, the kind of cricket we played initially uh, so definitely after the first two wins we had the first two losses especially against MIDC who have been uh, good teams in this tournament so so yeah definitely there was a little bit of like okay what do we work on and all of that but it never went into that place where why did we lose what happened or all of that we just like okay maybe this is this thing didn't work out let's try and fix these things let's start training so which was which was just uh, really nice and it was just really even and a calm atmosphere i think the mumbai indians the first game against the mumbai indians was a really tough loss um in terms of both not just the result of the loss but probably the performance we we felt that we we weren't as as brave or or played the sort of style of cricket that we really wanted to play and and i guess a lot of our focus um at that time was was on that style of of cricket and and how we wanted to to be and what what we wanted to be known for rather than just focusing on on the outcome um we were really confident that with our playing group and the the skill and and style that we've got if if we're able to to commit to to that game style um we're going to have some success at some stage in the tournament you never know what level of success that will that will bring but um the Mumbai Indians game was certainly a big learning for us and and was a tough night loss against dc where we lost by one run um richa went on to play such a valiant innings um but you had a conversation with her almost immediately right uh, what was that a little dramatic that tunnel thing <laughs> i don't know who took that photo <laughs> was it yeah. our our people yeah, yeah. <laughs> um like do we like for richa i think i've seen her since she was 16 and um uh, like from the time she was she was first part of the challenges which i was leading and i've seen her grow and all of that but that inning for me uh she's played some amazing innings for rcb and india before that as well but for me that innings was something which stood out for me as a player in in her and like she's just 20 and for her to play that sort of a mature innings uh she did not hurry up even the dot balls came i've seen her hurry hurry up a lot of times when two dot balls she plays but she trusted her ability to take it in the last ball uh and i just told her that you know that one ball two runs if you would have got or you would have not got i would have still come and told you that i am really really proud of you the way you fought and you got to still that point of line and i remember telling her that uh, you know like so the match like dc this match will happen like there will be like a lot of more matches but you know this innings of yours like makes me believe that you know uh, india will be able to uh, win a world cup trophy uh, because you know that that sort of a innings is something uh, which is really required 
and I said, do not worry, maybe we'll play final against the same team and you'll hit the winning runs. <laughs> Little did I know that it'll happen. <laughs> that night and that game, it lives in my memory um, because after we, we got back to the hotel and, and there was a full support staff and management and playing group, the, the sense of positivity around the group despite a, a one run loss and despite at that particular point in time having not secured our, our playoff position was still um, really easy to see and, and feel and, and that was really special and I think those were the moments that perhaps laid the foundation for what was to come in the next week. We just had this conversation that it's like a virtual quarter semis and the finals. Like the last match we, need to, we needed to win to make it to the eliminator, then the semis and the finals and of course till that point we hadn't beaten MI uh, in the last two seasons. So of course they are a good team and all of that but then <laughs> the way Pez bowled in that match was just amazing to watch from it off. She just turned the game on its head and uh, we won that match. And again, again in Eliminator, you know, uh, we were 130, like I thought we were maybe 15, 20 runs below par. Uh, but when we went on field, I think still, uh, we just told each other that we've played the best cricket, we've had a smile on our face, been really calm, stuck to our plans. Let's do it, let's see, take the game till the end, till like, you know, till the 20th over and then you don't know it's a, it's a game of cricket, anything can happen. Uh, that was the whole conversation. We went in really calm, composed. Even when the wickets fell, we, we were really calm. We didn't really think, oh, we need to then we need to lose, whatever. We just said, let's stick to process. We have enjoyed each other's company a lot throughout 20 days. Let's just do that. Uh, they needed 18 balls, 20. From that, for the bowlers to pull off a win of five runs is, is massive. Like, you know, not even a run or two. We, we won by five runs, which is, which is, which was, I think, we, we didn't really understand what actually happened <laughs> and I think I have a video also where do I say that I don't understand what happened because it was just, yeah, it was, uh, I feel it was that, like it was something uh, like, you know, you do things correctly, you do things positively and things work out. I was, I think that eliminator day was that day where, you know, when a positive environment makes things happen in a, in a team, I think that 18 balls, if something, some magic happened and you know, of course the bowlers, the way they bowled was amazing but then it requires a little bit of a cricket magic I always believe to win close games and I feel, felt that magic was with us in that eliminator. When we lost the one run match against DC, uh, like few days before the final, I don't know, somehow in the dugout, yeah, I was feeling sad but I somehow I, I just told myself that nah, I think we'll beat them when it's required the most. I, I just said like I had that thought in my head and I was just like it's okay let's just sleep on it just, let's not really stress on this uh, loss because sometimes when you lose by one run and uh, then of course the final I lost the toss and we were fielding and they started like really well six overs or 60 odd runs and I was like okay <laughs> like they have really good batting so even in the strategic timeout when we took a strategic timeout at 6 overs the only thing we said like it's a good wicket don't worry do not stress just do what we've planned because uh, our planning was really on point on that particular match in terms of uh, we had a lot of meetings with our bowlers and all of that so we like just let's back what we've planned let's not over complicate it and then that Sophie Molyneux over happened and that over is where why the trophy is worth with us because to get Shefali Jemmy and Capsi in, in the space of like six balls was something really nice and, um, and and yeah since then I think we just dominated the whole 25 odd overs later on. This, maybe the after the first 5-6 overs the whole game was dominated by RCB which was really nice. I was quiet throughout the, throughout the game because even during the game I don't talk much. Uh, I get into my own shell and space and I don't, I don't talk much. I don't move seats. Uh, I wait till the last ball because I believe in that because until unless the last ball is bowled and the last run is scored or the last wicket is taken if the game is not done. Uh, there was pent up emotion and tears started to roll uh, when the last uh, when uh, Richa hit that four and I took maybe a couple of minutes to console and 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 recoup myself uh, and then it was all joy um, and that was a fanboy moment for me too because every every uh, RCBN who is there is also a fan fan of uh, RCB so that moment took over 
you have changed the biggest narrative for rcb from isala cup namde to isala cup namdu <laughs> how does that feel uh well, i think that, that morning when i woke up um, the finals day and uh, i was really calm and i was i think i've been the calmest in on the final day maybe i slept 10 hours nicely and i woke up and i just was uh just maybe talking to someone and all all of that and then they were just like uh, is ala cup nam de and nam and then i was just uh, just google it what does it mean so like this year the trophy should be ours or you know that so in just in my head i was just like if we have a good match and we end up winning i really want to say this for the fans that maybe it's changed and i just left that thought there and i was like okay do not think far ahead just let's start the process again it was just like a 5 minute thought so when it actually happened it struck me that oh i had thought something of this in the morning so i re- i remember i think danish nikhil rajesh everyone was there and um, i didn't know what does what the word changes for us to say that the trophy is ours so i asked them for the guidance and we constructed a statement and <laughs> the, the sentence which i said ईसालाइन So I'm really happy that you know for the fans that you know now they can proudly say <laughs> and and I I hope that you know now that this has happened the sentence is not used a lot <laughs> because as I said I think we had discussed that this only goal of, of RCB is to not talk about the goal ईसा लकअप नाम दू